We all know what happened on that day. Well, most of us do at least. But for those of you who don't, here's June 4th, A Brief History. It all started in mid-April of 1989, when the death of reformist politician Hu Yaobang sparked commemorations and mournings in the Tiananmen Square. Over the next few days, more people came to the square, and various people started speaking about broader political issues, such as freedom of the press, democracy, and anti-corruption. This all escalated very quickly, and on April 27th, over 60,000 Beijing University students began to march towards Tiananmen Square to join the protests. In mid-May of 1989, Tiananmen Square protests rose to an estimated 1.2 million people, and the government responded by declaring martial law on May the 20th. Troops were sent into the square, but retreated just days later after being blocked off by the protesters. Then, on the night of June the 3rd, troops were ordered to get into the square by 1 a.m. midnight of the 4th and use any means necessary. At first, the soldiers lined up at the corners of the square and started firing bullets into the sky above the protesters, but this didn't scare them. At this point, a few soldiers actually started shooting down rows of protesters in order to push into the square but they still didn't move. In fact, the rows of students just got more populated and sturdy. Once news spread that the soldiers were actually shooting the protesters, they began to get quite angry and even started attacking some of the soldiers and raiding their tanks. Thousands of students, workers, and other protesters were shot dead and the news quickly echoed around the whole world. This video isn't about that. This video isn't about the facts, what happened on the day, but rather the perspectives, how people from different backgrounds perceive the event in very similar ways. So I went out and interviewed four different people, all of which are somehow connected to the incident. And this is what they had to say. You know, before the June 4th My first interview was with a man named Mac. He was part of the Hong Kong Federation of Students at the time and raised six to seven million dollars for the students and protesters in Beijing. So majority of the Hong Kong people, including myself, you know, one on one hand very anxious, on the other hand it's also whether well, it's exciting to see whether that will represent an opportunity for Hong Kong people to gain certain uh, degree, a uh, higher degree of autonomy in the future. So that means it's a kind of a, a kind of domestic affair, it's just a family matter now. Naturally, his views are very biased towards the students, being very involved with them. Well, I think uh, even with the benefit of hindsight, there will be no sympathy for the government. They are the one who ordered the army to crack down you know, in a very violent manner. Whether that will be the only way they deal with it, I think it's highly questionable. They are in the, in the, in the position to choose not to do something. At the end of the day, when you look at the uh, memo of the late uh, leader Dan Xiaoping, he, I think he has very explicitly stated that if he would like to kill a few hundred and a few thousand students in exchange for the, uh, the so-called stability in China, he, 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 he thinks it's a good bargain. Next up, I interviewed my grandma. Um, the students were very idealistic. It was a time of great euphoria. The students were, I wouldn't say enjoying what was happening, but they had some faith in that changes would be made for the future, and that was their future. She was an English teacher in Beijing at the time, and wasn't too involved with the political side of the incident. So naturally, her answers were fairly neutral, though still clearly in favor of the students. And she didn't even want to answer the questions about the government. Um, the government itself, um, I think my husband could answer that better. He has a much more in-depth knowledge of what was actually happening politically in the government at the time. She was also interviewed for a BBC documentary about China at the time, called Red Dynasty, which was pretty cool, I guess. Then I interviewed a woman by the name of Fan. She was a reporter for the Hong Kong Standard newspaper at the time. Uh, my emotion was very much uh, driven by the development of the of the political event. Being a political journalist, I I need to stick to the professional ethics, uh, stay neutral, stick to the facts, and stay independent and report the truth. And she seemed to have very neutral views, talking only about how the protesters felt 
rather than sharing her own opinions. Uh, as an individual, especially someone coming from Hong Kong, uh, I share the sentiment of many Hong Kong people in 1989. Although she did express little nuggets of her own perspectives at times. I, I was sympathetic with the students and believe they have genuine goal and aspiration to fight for a better future of China. Lastly, I interviewed my grandfather. You know, what I felt at the time was that the students, uh, they had this courage to carry out what they believed was their ideal and they demanded uh, that the ideal was to be uh, implemented. Though he wasn't in Beijing on the day, he was there up until late April and saw a lot of the protests leading up to the incident. So I think, you know, it was kind of brutally overdone. But at the same time, I think there was a lot of stupidity behind it all. He was definitely more understanding towards the government compared to the other people I interviewed. I'm glad that China retained the peace and stability because of their action. Although at the time, it seemed to be a bit brutal. But you must also realize that that's the soldiers that opened fire on the crowd, not exactly students. They were attacked in the first place by some of the workers that joined the movement. Though he was still quite sympathetic towards the students. Well, at the time, I was very much um, on the side of the students, uh, although it wasn't quite clear. As far as I know, they were actually opposing Li Peng, the prime minister. OK, so there you have it four different people from four different backgrounds, yet they all seem to share a very similar perspective on the incident. They all had some form of connection to the students and were all clearly very moved by their initiatives. June the 4th was one of the most important days in modern Chinese history, and it shaped the Chinese Communist Party in ways that are incomparable to anything else that's happened in the last 30 years. However, also shaped the people of China and their views on the government, and as Max said, actually discourage many Chinese students from doing anything in the form of challenging the government. The events leading up to and on this day is everything but an unimportant counter-revolutionary riot, as many Chinese newspapers labeled it, and will go down in history as one of the key components that shaped the country to what it is today. And the last thing that should be happening is the government censoring it from millions of young people today. Thanks for watching.